Warning, possible spoilers. Be sure not to click on a video in the first place if it covers a topic you don't want to hear about. We now have official high quality pictures of five of the LEGO Avengers Endgame sets thanks to Amazon. In this video, I'm going to take you through the pictures that we have for those five sets and give you my thoughts about each set just based on what I can see so far. This first one is Captain America Outriders Attack. Comes with 167 pieces and is listed at 25 euro. That's the German price. You can expect the price to vary across the eurozone as it always does. Subtract five for an estimate of the uh, British pounds price and go with a similar number, possibly a little bit higher than the German euro price for a, an estimate for US dollars. This one comes with Captain America and three Outriders. Two of the Outriders have two regular arms and four extra long claw arms each, and one of them just has two of the claw arms. Captain America here comes with the motorcycle, which is severely oversized, but still intended to look kind of like a regular motorcycle. The bike has a single disc launcher on one side, and this comes with one set of the blast and splat power pieces to help you to make things come alive. The prints for the Outriders once again look fantastic to me, some of the best work that LEGO has done, really happy with those. And Cap, well, I'm personally just not a fan of the, the white suits for the Avengers this time around. I'll have to see in the movie and as we get more official media out there how closely these match or don't. I think the motorcycle looks great as a toy, though it is definitely very, very, very severely oversized. And I think that'll just limit the appeal of this to some of the, the younger end of the audience, which is fine in and of itself for this toy. Switching over to something much bigger, here's the Avengers Ultimate Quinjet set. Comes with 832 pieces and is listed at 80 euro. This one comes with Thor, Black Widow, Hawkeye, Rocket Raccoon, and two Chitari. This set also includes its own motorcycle, this time a tricycle style bike, which has a couple of stud shooters on the front, and it has a very basic design, looks awkward to ride it, and the Technic beams on the sides are just completely exposed. This is disappointing to me personally. I really like the built-up blaster weapons for the Chitari. They are definitely oversized a bit, but not too much, and I just appreciate having to actually build a weapon that's small enough to be somewhat reasonable for a figure to hold it. The Avengers figures in this set look, well, a bit uniform due to their uniforms. And I feel like that uniformity takes a lot of the desirability away from these figures and kind of drains some of their character, well, a lot of their character away, and certainly their individuality. It'll be interesting to see, once the movie actually comes out, how long this uniform lasts, or if they will quickly switch back or be switching back and forth in time and place and, and setting and situation between this uniform and something, you know, more like what we're used to and more individual for each character. The Quinjet looks like a satisfyingly large and complex build. Looks like it has plenty of usable space in it, which is very important. I'm certain you will be able to put all of the Avengers figures included in this set inside of here and possibly a little bit more. Yeah, the, the build and the parts usage that I can see looks pretty good. I'm just personally not a fan of the main forward canopy piece. I almost feel like that needed a print on it. You know, that is a Lego Speed Champions part and they have made a lot of those with specialized prints. I think this set could have used one of those specialized prints. I feel like it deserves it. The big six stud shooter on the back kind of sticks out with its form, but at least its colors aren't too bright. And this does easily retract away. That's just part of the intended features. Of course, if you don't want the thing at all, you can easily leave it off. But I think that's a good integration of a pretty hefty play feature. Next up, the War Machine Buster, similar to the Hulk Buster, but for War Machine, this one comes with 362 pieces and is listed at 35 euro, which I think is going to be pretty reasonable here. Comes with a regular War Machine figure, again in the white suit, as with Ant-Man in full minifigure size. And this comes with two Outriders, one of them with six regular arms and one of them with two claw arms. Again, Outriders, great. Avengers in white outfits, kind of boring. 
The suit though, for the most part, looks pretty good to me in its overall shaping. I feel like there will be a little bit of limitation in the ankle range of motion. I think that'll, that'll be the one thing that holds it back the most. But beyond that, I think it should be decently poseable. Looks like the arms will rotate kind of like wrists, but you won't be able to bend the elbows. I think that'll actually be okay for this particular design. Has the exclusive print for the helmet or head area. Always good to see another print. And then you just have the launcher and the, the gun on the back, which are a little bit awkward looking. Of course, they need to have a working action feature there and these things need to be durable because these are primarily intended to be toys, to be grabbed and held and crashed into other toys by kids. So that's a very important consideration there. I think that customizers will have to come to the rescue to make those, those weapons look better they'll probably end up being a little bit more flimsy but you know this is the compromise that was made here i personally especially dislike the missile launcher but again fortunately these things that i like the least up here are just the simplest things most of this is good i think for a broad range of customers the Iron Man Hall of Armor comes with 524 pieces and is listed at 60 euro. This one comes with Mark 50, Mark 41, Mark 38, aka Igor, Mark 5, and Mark 1 versions of the Iron Man suit. It also comes with two Outriders with six regular arms. Of course, I'll have to look at the figures more closely once this is released and I can get it in hand, but just getting that wide of a selection of versions of Iron Man in one set I think is fantastic to begin with and not as something like a, a Comic-Con exclusive. And the Hall of Armor's design here is really, really smart because it is absolutely designed to be added to with minimal customization. You can get two of this set and start to stack things up significantly. You can add on to the left, you can add on to the right, you can rearrange the the little armor pods uh, individually within the set without even buying anything different. You've got some gag stuff, you've got some accessories, they've got dummy in there. It's just, to me, a really, really nice and well-designed set that I think, I'm hoping, is going to be uh, valued appropriately for the amount of stuff that you get here. Certainly getting that many versions of Iron Man in one set at a regular retail price and not with some crazy special limited edition style of markup is a treat. The 800 pound gorilla suit in the room though is Igor, which to me looks ugly, just to be honest. I mean, I do understand that it had to be somewhat limited in its part count and the designer clearly didn't want to go too far out of scale with it. I think this is actually pretty well scaled to its, its actual size relative to minifigures. And it is Lego, and that's fundamentally why it's blocky looking. Looking at it a little bit more closely, it's blocky more because of the specific design with all of the ball joints to allow it to articulate quite a lot. But the thing that bothers me personally the most is the face. It's a printed tile, just a one by two, which is very flat for the eyes, and then they have an unprinted piece down below that tries to simulate the shape, and I just feel like it doesn't work well enough. Still though, overall, I think this is a great set that will appeal to a lot of people, and will make a lot of people happy to own. And finally, this is Avengers Compound Battle. Comes with 699 pieces, and is listed at 100 euro. The figures included here are Captain Marvel, Iron Man, Nebula, Hulk as a big fig, Ant-Man as a nano fig, Thanos as a big fig again, and an Outrider, just one Outrider with six regular arms. There's an awkward juxtaposition on the main box art on the front with the Hulk shown in this set and the art version of him showing him in a completely different outfit. Now, I don't know... I don't, I don't think any of us know at this time if that's actually a mistake by LEGO. I feel like they may know what they're doing there. Keep in mind that oftentimes these first wave sets are not, uh, not truly representative of the core uh, storyline of, of a given movie. Oftentimes they'll 
take inspiration from a specific scene that may be very short or something. Uh, for all we know, this could be all from a very brief alternate timeline sequence or something. We, we just don't know. I feel like LEGO designers are aware, <laughs> well aware of the stretchy purple Avengers suit for Hulk that is shown on the box art for, uh, for the set right there. But they made another one with no shirt for some reason that we'll have to we'll have to find out about. I do find the very very rectangular feet for both of these big figs to be awkward. It's interesting that they did another fully helmeted version of Thanos and again I, I, I'm not convinced just yet that that's a, a wrong decision. I know that a lot of fans want a no helmet version of, of Thanos, uh, myself included by now, but I'm, I'm just not going to get mad at, at Lego for designing this just yet until I really know what's going on. It's also noteworthy that Thanos here has only two of the gems included on the Infinity Gauntlet there. A helicopter is included. It has a lot of pieces in it for its size, but that size is rather small and it's a little bit dumpy looking, has a huge weapon on, on the front. So, you know, this is clearly just made to be a toy and not a collectible style of item at all. They include a vehicle there also that's intended to be fast yet fairly well armored and armed both. And when you look at the structures, it kind of looks like a, a cross between a small Lego police station and maybe even a fire station or a garage, you know, just for regular work on vehicles in a city. And I'm good with all, with all of that. I actually very much like what I see here, and it makes me want to expand upon it. it makes me want to add to it. You can see there are some built-in action features with it. I really like the use of the just regular trans brown or trans black, you know, tinted smoky windows consistently, including for the roll-up garage. Looks really good to me. I want to get lots of those pieces. Just overall, this presents very, very nicely, if you ask me. Around the back, of course, everything is open. And, uh, you know, that's fully just designed for the sake of play and, you know, being able to get your hands and fingers in there to place figures where you want them to go. It looks like it'll be fairly easy to move some of the things around if you don't like their arrangement. And again, the entire build looks just ready for easy customization and expanding. But just as it is, as it's designed and with just the parts included in the set that you buy, I think this is very nice. Not sure about the price though. We'll have to see how big it really looks in person. I feel like this may be a little bit overpriced, partially because of the inclusion of two big figs in one set. This entire wave to me looks pretty consistent. I think that's what I respect about all of these together the most. They look like Almost they were designed all in the same room, in the same place, if not by the same person, certainly by a close-knit team. They all look like they are compatible with one another. They all look like they are designed for the same customers for the most part, with a definite focus on the, the young to mid-young range of, of ages, which is perfect. You know, that's, that's what they should be made for. Some of the prices may be a little bit high, but I do feel like they are at least within the range of reasonability across the board, and hopefully some small discounts from retailers will help to boost the, the value proposition even more. The big, big question though is how accurate will these sets be to what we see in the movie, and for how long will we see any of this in the movie? Fortunately, a lot of this stuff is going to have good play value for kids, outside of the realm of, of specific accuracy to the events of the movie, with the notable exception of the brigade of white suits for the Avengers members. Let me know what you think about these sets, if any of them really stand out to you, or if any particular feature really stands out to you in either a positive or a negative way. I look forward to your comments, and I look forward to purchasing these, building them, and reviewing them in person once they become available. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll talk to you again soon.